Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been sitting here looking at this Williams Phoenix pinball machine for a month now. And it is finally time. It has finally made its, uh, its way up the ladder and we're finally going to fix it. So we got this thing in, in a whole group of games we bought off of a gentleman and it's been sitting around. And if you remember back before Christmas, we were going to work on this, but we didn't have enough time to get it done before Christmas. So we fixed a Williams Firepower, which is a similar model. We fixed a Williams Tri-Zone, which is a similar model. And now we, were, we are up to this Phoenix, uh, which I believe is a Williams System 6, I believe. I believe. Don't quote me on that. So we have been working on the play field a little bit. Joe did that for us, knocked it out. It's looking pretty good, but he's leaving me all of this mess here. Look at this. Can you believe this? There's a few things missing, aren't there? So when we got this, it had been sitting on its rear end in a storage building uh, for many years, and we bought it off a gentleman, and it wasn't in the greatest of shape, so it's had a little work done to it. Can you see the touch-up paint, how it's slightly different there, where the uh, plywood had delaminated and the back was replaced the back of the top was replaced you can see that the top has also been repainted slightly different color but if you don't know it's hard to tell so we had to do some physical stuff to it just to get the thing back up on its feet but it is back up on its feet and now we got to get it back running so this is what we're starting with. We'll look over the play field real quick, uh, just because we've been working on it. So we uh, took everything off the play field, cleaned it all up, waxed it. Look at the look at the freaking color on that. I mean, just look at how they chose to do that. There is art everywhere, it's way over the top, and there's some kind of some kind of bat human creature. <laughs> I guess is the Phoenix. Just crazy killer art. So I'm hoping we get this thing nice. Well, I know we're going to get this thing nice and uh, working and playing fast. I think it's probably going to be a pretty cool game. I like these kind of weird forgotten ones from the 70s, though. So what can I say, people? So there's that. And then I don't know. I wasn't around back then. So I don't know if Williams made the plastics like this or if they have faded away over time but like check out the chick up here how all of her uh, melanin has disappeared she's like pale white which there's nothing wrong with that I myself am pale white I'm just saying I don't know if they made it like that it almost looks like there's a color missing but if you look on the play field, the, the birds like that too. So I've seen uh, flash machines that are the same way. So I think maybe they just, they just made them like that. But uh, you got a naked chick up here in the corner. It's always good. Got another naked chick over here. Great. You got a naked dude. Not quite so excited about that. Another naked dude. And I mean, y'all know how I'm gendering these people uh, look how they made this one plastic they cut it and then made it where there is a little metal piece that holds it up higher and of course it's like that from the factory and I guess I, the, the purpose of it uh, was because of that um, that target back there, which is kind of weird because like on some Bally games, look, if you knock it up in there, there is a, there is a ramp built out of the rails that raises the ball up off the play field a little bit and makes it hit that target. I don't know why they did that. It's kind of weird. It's not a captive ball like that. You actually sh can shoot the ball up in there. So I don't know why they decided to make it quite like that, but they did. And that's cool. It's got drop targets on the right. It's got drop targets on the left. It's even got two drop targets in the middle there. 
this is a 10 drop target game kind of cool I uh, we got a spinner missing here so there's a spinner that goes here too so we'll add that back in of course but it's a it's a good looking game I love the color scheme yellow like a dark fuchsia red kind of thing some red orange just screams freaking 70s doesn't it when was this made 79 maybe is there a uh, 78 it says on the play field a lot of times though the artwork will be like it may have came out in 79 um, even though the copyright says 78 because they would do the artwork ahead of time I believe all right so that's that and it has this weird cabinet color and also lots of orange so let me prop up the play field and we'll look inside of it and see what we're starting with here's what we got going on inside there's a little bit of trash in it uh, again this has been in storage a long time you can see the plywood back uh, I had to put a new leg plate on it had some issues over there uh, you can see the original speaker still in it there's the uh, coin box cover there's the original manual there's some more paperwork that's cool most of that stuff is online though so usually you don't need that and this is actually the soundboard now this is early in uh, Williams foray into sound so this is their first soundboard and uh, we'll have to work on that to get it going and this is the one that wasn't capable of speech and it had this little lever on it where you could flip it and make the game make electronic chimes because they were afraid that people would not play the game if it didn't have the old-school chimes and bells in it and so some operators demanded that you be able to make it sound like chimes but we're not going to do that we're going to have the nice electronic sounds so under the play field it's actually kind of got a lot going on a lot of newer games that come out now don't have this much stuff in them even though on, up top they might be more fun and have more uh, ramps and toys and stuff they don't have as many coils and things so of course here's your two flippers um, tons of these little light bars with bulbs in them you've got your two kickers they kick you've got on the drop target banks you have two coils on each one to reset them then you have the two in the middle that each have their individual coil and then you get your three coils for your uh, pop bumpers so three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen coils on the bottom of the play field which is that's pretty that's pretty intense check out the back of the coin door looks like it's there it's missing the coin max but that's no big deal um, everything looks pretty good it's just a worn game that's been stored kind of rough you know but you saw the play field the play field's in nice shape the cabinet is presentable so this will make a nice little machine for somebody and uh, if we can get it playing good um, that'll be great so let's look in the back box and see what we're starting with the board sets okay so first stop on the front the panel the light panel here you'll notice all the displays are missing except for the main display and the reason for that is because if you watched our previous our previous video about uh, we were doing displays for the tri-zone uh, we took the we had these three Williams games that had the same displays in them so we had the tri-zone we had this Phoenix and we had the firepower and we took the displays off all three sets and we scrounged together two complete good working sets and put them in the firepower which we sold first and then we put another set in the tri-zone which we sold next and then since this game needed the most work uh, it, it basically had its parts robbed off of it however with that said we're going to make it up to it because since it's now missing all the displays it's going to get brand new LED displays so this thing is going to be on fire just like a Phoenix ought to be right and, and we've had a couple uh, commenters saying well why didn't you put the new displays in the firepower well it's because I, I have to build them we're gonna do a video on building them and uh, I just didn't have the time to mess with all that and film it and all that that we wanted to do um, so we used the ones that we had fixed them up put them in the two games that we were gonna sell first and got rid of them so since this one ended up 
getting neglected and had to wait a little longer to get fixed, it's going to get rewarded with the nice new displays. But let's look in the back box here. So we've got the transformer here, the big can capacitor still there, the two bridge rectifiers without the fuses that make these catch on fire if you don't put them in. So we'll be putting those in. Uh, and here's the power supply. Looks pretty much all original. Looks like there hasn't been anything done to it. That is crazy. Makes you wonder if that's just been in there and has never been removed from the game. Well, I see one screw is a different color than the other one, so I guess at some point somebody's removed it. Um, yeah, they've been working on some stuff. None of the serial numbers match, so yeah, it's been swapped around and stuff. Um, and then, if you know anything about Williams games, they use this two-board set over here. That's the MPU at the top, and that's the driver board on the bottom. The driver boards, it's pretty common to see the resistors be toasty like that. They probably still work just fine, but they just burn themselves up and look like crap, but usually they work fine. But unfortunately, this is a System 6 MPU board, and unfortunately, the battery holder has done its work and uh, ate up what's below it. Am I right about that being a System 6? I may be wrong about that. We'll look that all up, but it looks like there's... Hmm. Yeah, we'll look it all up. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of damage. So it's not going to work the way it is. We'll have to... We'll have to definitely work on the MPU. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, whenever we work on them, we always start at the beginning. So running from the wall, it comes in, the power comes in, uh, goes into the bottom, uh, hits that filter that's down there, goes through the line switch, and then runs back up here to this power supply. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to vacuum out and clean out the inside of this cabinet, get it all looking nice and I don't want to say spick and span, but better than it does now at least. Get all the crap out of it. And then we're gonna we're gonna check out that line that's running in, make sure everything looks good on that, that it's not deteriorated and needs replaced or anything. Uh, and if all of that looks good, then we'll be up here to the power supply and we'll start working on the power supply. So let me get the vacuum cleaner and uh, I'll clean out the inside a little bit. This is one of the coolest parts about working on these is the stuff you find inside of them because it kind of takes you back to 1978 or whenever this came out. Um, just a glimpse of it, right? So we'll look through it if you're interested in that. I've, I'm actually... We have this Gottlieb amazing Spider-Man pinball machine right next to it that's coming up soon. So we will be working on this one soon. So look for that video coming. But for today, we're using it as a table. <laughs> Right. So inside, uh, this is the uh, the instruction card that was on the uh, apron. You can see that, that it's actually printed on both sides because there were a bunch of things you could change. And then depending on how you had the, the game set up, uh, you would turn the card over. So for this one, for instance, it says special scores, one credit down there at the bottom. Uh, and on this one, it also says that, but it has extra stuff, uh, you know, where uh, if you beat the high score, you get a credit, blah, blah, blah. So there's a bunch of those in there. But this is kind of neat. Cash box check off list. So this is what it came with whenever you bought the game new. Steel wall. That would be a pinball. Four back box bolts. Four washers for the back box bolts. <laughs> Eight leg bolts. Four leg casters to adjust the legs with. Uh, four hex nuts. Uh, what would those be for? Hmm. One cash box. It's not in there. Something happened to it. One cash box cover. I've got that. One cash box handle. I don't have that. Test games report for U.S. prototypes only. We don't have that because this wasn't a prototype. An IC extracting tool came with the game. Hmm. Don't have that. Cash box trays. This came with the double shoot. And it was packed by CS. Okay. And you get this little thing. William, special notice. This game is provided with a high score reset feature. Good lord, give me some focus here, people. Special notice. This game is provided with a high score reset feature. 
the high score to date can be reset to the factory. Boy, it does not like that, does it? Can be reset to the factory setting, which is 350,000, from the coin door with the game in the game over mode momentarily to press the high score reset push button. So they actually show it to you here. Diagnostic switch, auto and manual, and then the high score reset switch, which they are bragging about. And what you know it, there it is. It actually still exists. Must have been something new. So this is another instruction card. It's slightly different. Uh, now ready. Williams 1977 to 78 parts catalog free. Fill in the postage free card below and mail. Please send me your parts card. The operator said, out of hell with it. Look, they didn't even need a stamp. And the operator said, ah, I'm not going to do that. I don't want anything free. So here's the manual. It's had a little bit of damage. It's telling you how to, in, uh, how to install it. And then they had this setup procedure in these early ones that was just ridiculous basically you turn some dip switches and then hit some buttons and then an LED would flash if it saved your setting and all of this crap thank god that didn't catch on so it's how you change a lot of the pricing and stuff so instead of setting the dip switch and leaving it like that for depending on what you want you had to set the dip switch and then press a button to program that into the computer watch how many times it flashed and then do it again for each setting and it just was real clunky and didn't work very good they abandoned that at some point All right, so there's the manual and here's the the uh, playfield diagram you'll see that it says conservative me medium and liberal depending on where you place certain posts on the on the board uh, basically, if you put it liberal, it's down farther so that it blocks the ball more often from going down these out lanes and things like that. So it just depends on how many times you wanted people to win free games and such. Here are the schematics of each board. Kind of tells you uh, how everything's wired, how everything's set up, and down to the board level, you know. Uh, here's some little inserts that go in on the on the uh, the cost card. You put this in to change how many points to get a high game. Another instruction card. There's a little thing I'm looking for. I don't want to show the phone number on. Uh, telling you how to change another sheet. Tell, trying to tell you how to uh, change the. Uh, settings because I think they already knew that it was a bad idea the way they were doing it. Uh, electronic components and complete assemblies first used on World Cup and all following solid state games. So this is the displays, uh, the driver board, uh, some more of that. Look, here's the Here's the door without the high score reset. So that's why they put that extra little piece of paper in there to show you that it was the new door. Okay. Business reply card. Free service manual binder. Receive periodic service information. Fill out this card and return for a free Williams service manual binder. Limit one per operator and get placed on the Williams service bulletin mailing list. Boy, that'd be cool to find. Okay, uh, supplement with new parts and assemblies first used on Phoenix. So uh, you've got a, I guess a piece of metal here. Oh, that little ramp thing that we were looking at. Above bracket is used as a stop to keep from driving top end of wire forms too far down into play field. And then this switch. Uh, a T-nut shown below is used on, on machine screw threads to eliminate the loosening of those plastic posts which are struck more frequently and with greater force by the ball. So they were starting to bolt the, the uh, posts onto the play field instead of just screw them on. That's a great improvement. Eight-ohm speaker with related parts, light socket strips. 
Oh, here's a good one. Price list, arranged in numerical order. Uh, ball gate, 26 cents. Mounting bracket for ball gate, 38 cents. Screen for venting hole, 41 cents. Let's find something interesting. Uh, do, 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 diode, 26 cents. Look at that, folks. There's a part that has went down in value over the years. You can buy a diode now for like a penny. Uh, rubber bumper, eight cents. Eight ohm speaker, eight dollars and eighty cents. Might be able to beat that down too. Uh, Playfield plastic set of eight, twenty-eight dollars and eighty-six cents. Uh, spinning target switch, ninety-five cents. Flipper coil assembly, five dollars. All right. New style jet bumper assembly with more easily removable rods and rings. Okay, enough of that. Okay, so where is my little thing here that I'm trying to hide a little bit? Operator, please fill in card and return. I suppose this is for the warranty. Name of product, dealer from whom purchased your name. Was the game received in good condition or any adjustments necessary? Uh, what manufacturer's games do you prefer and why? Okay, so this is what I've been wanting to show you, but I'm trying to hide the phone number in case this gentleman is still around. So there's this little card in there, William T. Thavallis, Amusements, Jukebox, Pool Tables, Electronic Games, and then it shows his phone number and it says that he's in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I had that business card in there. So that was who originally must have had this. This is more of all the little insert things. Tons of those. Those actually seem like they're out of a different machine. The manual, I mean the, the thing that it came in, and then that double shoot coin box thing that they were bragging about. Okay, so that's all of that. Oh, one, one last thing. An old quarter wrapper that hasn't been used. From First Citizens Bank and Trust Company, your can-do bank. So that's where they were taking all your quarters, folks, back in the day. At least this operator. Okay, so I got the inside cleaned up pretty good. Um, the power cord comes in. Runs over to here to this filter. It runs through a fuse. All of that looks really good. So we're going to work our way up into the back box. To where the power supply is and we're going to pull that power supply out and check it out here is the power supply as removed from the game so what this does is it creates uh, the, the power or distributes the power and stuff for uh, all the different parts of the machine so the most important part of the machine is the 5 volts and the 12 volts uh, that runs the all of the IC chips on the MPU which is the big board on the left that we were looking at that uh, keeps the program and the game running. So basically voltage comes in here, AC voltage, and it is rectified by these two diodes with half wave rectification, which is like, uh, I don't even know why they did that, but it, whatever, I'm, I'm not an uh, electrical engineer, obviously. Um, but they, they did it ha with half wave rectification and then they use this cap to filter it. So this cap goes bad after a while. So as you can see, it's starting to puff out. It's it's losing it, <laughs> right? So we need to replace this capacitor. It, th on this particular one, it's a, this is, oh, and by the way, I looked it up, it's a system four. We're not a system six, system four. They're all very similar though, so it's not that important. Um, th this capacitor is a 12,000 UF. Once they got this uh, system seven, they upgraded it to an 18,000 UF. Um, oh, and another thing, people keep giving me crap for saying UF. It says UF right on the cap, people. Now, I know it means microfarad and all that crap, but if they wanted me to pronounce it microfarad, they should have wrote microfarad on the freaking cap, but they wrote UF, so that's how I pronounce it. Okay? 18,000 UF. Deal with it. So, this is a 12,000 UF. This is an 18,000 UF. Microfarad. Um, it's a little oversized, but... Uh, on the on the system sevens and stuff, this is what they used, and from then on they used this, so it doesn't harm it to put one of these on one of the older ones. And by doing that, uh, basically you make this power supply where it can fit in other games, and this uh, um, 
you know, you only have to keep one of these in instead of having to keep a 12,000 in and an 18,000 in. So we're going to put an 18,000 UF cap in there. And then we're also going to replace these two diodes. These diodes get smoky sometimes and uh, you'll get some issues out of them. So you might as well replace them because it's so cheap to do so. So these are 6A4 um, diodes. There's probably a better way to pronounce that, but I'm just reading what's written on it, which is what I usually do. 6A4 uh, diodes. So we're going to put these in place of that. These are like a nickel or something like that. I've got like 500 of them or something. I got a really good deal. <laughs> And you end up using these in all kinds of places. They'll, they'll work in all kinds of stuff. They're a little big, uh, but the ones that are in there are pretty big too, so I think it'll go through the, the board all right. So we're going to put these two diodes in. We're going to put our 18,000 UF capacitor in, and that's going to make it where our 5 volts is nice and rectified and doing its thing. Some people will replace the, the voltage regulator up here too, but I always leave it if it's still working. But you can certainly replace that too if you'd like. Now over here, um, the board has the fuses and then it's dominated by these things up here. This is what control what creates the display voltages. So it runs on negative 100 volts and positive 100 volts. But the good news is, if you put the LED displays in it, you don't need that anymore. It doesn't run off those voltages. It runs off 5 volts like everything else on the, on the game. So you get rid of this whole area of the board uh, being even necessary. Now, with that said, um, I don't usually remove the stuff. You just leave it in there. What we will do is take the, the, uh, the voltage... Uh, the voltage fuse out that fuses that area of the board which I think actually kills it on this side of it so it makes it where this doesn't even come up I believe we'll have to look into that but if you pull the fuse basically the high voltage display section doesn't even do anything so that's good um, and you're basically turning this into a 5 volt power supply but it, it also distributes some voltages for the switch matrix and the lamp matrix that big cap in the back is for the lamp matrix so um, I've had people in comments ask before, should you replace that capacitor? Well, if that capacitor is not up to spec, what it's basically going to do is make uh, your lights not work as good. So they may be a little dimmer, or they may strobe a little more, or whatever. It's not that big of a deal. It has nothing to do with whether or not the game's running good. So if the lights look fine and everything's running, just leave that cap. It's no big deal. Sometimes they go bad and they short out. If they short out, uh, they'll blow the fuse. If you've if you've installed the fuse on the lamp uh, um, bridge rectifier there, so we're going to do that for show. So I'm going to replace the capacitor. I'm going to replace these two diodes. We're also going to go on the back and resolder all of these pins on these connectors um, and these if they need it, um, just to make it nice and solid. Sometimes when you get bad solder joints on the corners, it'd be interesting to see if there's any like that. All these look pretty good. Oh, there's a bad one. There's a bad one. Let me put some light on this situation. Uh, can we get the light? Oh, about had it. Let me get the light. There you go. Look at the second one from the right. See that ring around the pin? That is where it has broken loose. It's actually the last four of them. It is completely broken loose from the board. So it would probably touch just enough for the power to still get through, but you're going to have intermittent problems. So we got to resolder all that to get it nice and solid again. Um, so I'll work on that a little bit. And then... Uh, I'll show you what we end up with. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what we did and why we did it. So here is our little power supply. So people people uh, get overwhelmed by this stuff. They say, oh man, I got this broke pinball machine. How do you fix this stuff? Really, I'm not even that great at electronics, obviously. It's just if you break everything down, it's not as complicated as it looks. It's very simple. So here's our here's our board. Remember, we replaced the two diodes. We replaced the uh, the large capacitor. I checked the four fuses, 
and they were all the, exactly what they were supposed to be. So I actually wrote behind the fuse what value it's supposed to be just to help somebody out in the future. I replaced this capacitor down here. It's supposed to be an axial, but all I had was radial. Common problem, common theme in my videos if you watch. I replaced this capacitor up here just because they're, they're little cheap caps. They don't cost anything. And then this stuff over here is for the high voltage like we were talking about. I confirmed that if you remove this fuse, it kills the high voltage. So let's look on the schematics and I'll show you why we did what we did. And I'll show you how simple these really are. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. If you look on this, on this picture, they break down what each part is for. 5 volt DC is this area here, okay? The power inputs are these areas here. Here's the fuses, and they're showing you what everything does, right? This part makes the 100 volts for the display. This part makes the negative 100 volts for the display. Okay, so if you look on the schematics, these are the inputs from the transformer. So, I mean, the transformer usually it either works or it doesn't. You're not going to fix a transformer usually. Um, and usually they're good. So, knock on glass. Hopefully this one is, but we don't know yet. But so here's our inputs, and then you see what it's doing on on the board, what it's what each section does. So if you look, it goes through this fuse that says one quarter amp, and then it goes through some diodes and capacitors and things and blah 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 blah. And if you look over here, what it ends up doing is it goes out on a six pin header, and it's the plus 100 volts. Uh, there's a five volt and a negative 100 volts. Well, we know that's for the displays. So all of this stuff here is for the displays. And that fuse, if you remove it, it removes the power to all of this stuff. So none of that will even do anything if we take that fuse out. So it will kill that whole part of the board because we're putting the LED displays in. Now, I still have one of the original displays in there, so I'm leaving that in there temporarily just so we can see what's going on. Um, okay, so this whole part of the board is just for the displays. So if you've got a display problem, this is where you look right so we just broke it down to you know right where to look now right and if you test the voltage and see if you've got your hundred volts here but your negative 100 volts isn't here well then you know that it's something right through here you know so it's it's not as complicated as it looks and then you have this input here um, where it goes through a capacitor a hundred uf <laughs> hundred microfarad capacitor which is that one there that I replaced uh, the, a 0.1 capacitor and a, uh, a varistor. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Is that thing there, right? And then it goes through a fuse, and this comes over here, and it cre it's the solenoid voltage. It says right on it, solenoids 28 volts. So that's what that input is doing, and that's what that fuse is doing. So we replaced that capacitor, which would have had something to do with the voltage that goes to the solenoids which is, uh, I, I believe the flippers run off that same voltage, but they're solenoids, but, but certainly all the other ones do. Okay, so that's that part. So if you have a problem where none of the solenoids are working, well, you need to look in that area, right? And then you have this one where a line comes in, goes through a fuse, and then goes right out the board, and it says lamps, 6 amps. So uh, that's the general illumination. Now, I believe... That's not even on here. I believe that they've removed that from this board. I believe that's what this fuse did originally on them. So the reason that's empty is because it's not used. Now if you think, well, why would there be a fuse missing? There's a little piece of paper right there that says, not used. They used to run the voltage through that board, but it, it caused problems. It would. Um, it would burn up connectors and stuff, so they stopped using it. But it's still on the schematic. Because basically it's still wired in. Well, I guess it's not wired in, but on the power supply, it's still there. It's just you don't use it. And then down here we get to our last fuse, uh, which is a 4 amp. And this is the 5 volt section. I think I've got that right. Did I mess that up? Maybe that one is still there. So we've got one fuse, two fuses, three fuses, four fuses. Yeah, I may have that wrong. That one may actually still be there. But reg irregardless, um, you get down here to the uh, to the power supply. This is the part that makes the 5 volts that runs everything. It runs all the other boards, right? So the power comes in, and it goes through two diodes. 
So we replaced the two diodes. And then it comes over here and it has this big 12,000 UF capacitor that it uses to filter uh, the voltages, right? And so we replace that. Whenever I put them in, I like to just put them where you can read it just for the next tech. He'll be able to tell what diode is that that they put in there. God, this guy can't solder. He'll sell stuff like that. Um, so we replace that one. It runs through a fuse. We, I checked the fuse is fine and it's the right value. And then it runs over here and there's this one little capacitor. It says C note. C16 and C17 must be located as close to regulator as possible. They've got it right up against it. So I replaced the one. Now why did I replace that one but I didn't replace that one? It's because this disc one, they usually don't go bad just because of any capacitor that's made like it usually doesn't go back bad. Electrolytic ones have a chemical inside of it that dries up, uh, like a paste. So these go bad a lot over time. They dry out. So anytime you get one like that, you want to replace it. So I replaced this one. We skipped this one. And we didn't replace the voltage regular, but we talked about that. Uh, so I've replaced pretty much everything in the circuit. And that's going to get, that's going to get my... 5 volts, hopefully somewhere near 5 volts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop it in the machine and then we're going to test all those voltages because if your power supply is not working right, none of your stuff's going to work right. So we're going to pop it in the machine, test all the voltages, see how close we are to it, and then we'll know if we've got a good, solid power base to get all the other boards working off of. Okay, so we put it back in. I've got the lights on. Here, I'll, I'll back you out. See, the lights are on. The speaker is even uh, making a little bit of noise. Uh, probably something going on with the soundboard. But I have unplugged the power supply at the top. Um, all I have going into it are the inputs. Okay? So this is the voltage going in. And there's nothing going out. Everything's unplugged. So I'm going to check the, the uh, voltages before we plug anything in just to make sure everything's cool. And on the schematics, it actually tells you what everything is. So, uh, on the six pin header up at the top, uh, pin number one is ground, pin number two is not used, pin number three is negative 100, pin number four is 100, and pin number six is 5 volts. So we've got this, this is that pin there. Now for ground, the ground goes all the way around the board, so you can just touch the metal that's on the edges. You could actually even touch the metal in the back box if you wanted to. We'll touch the metal like that, and then we're very carefully going to check the pins on the power supply. So we'll do number six because it's the easiest. That's five volts. Number four is 99.7 volts instead of 100. Number three, be very careful, is a negative 103 volts. And that's that. Number two isn't used, and number one is ground. So the 100 volts was 99.7. The negative 100 volts was negative 103 and then the five volts that the display uses was there. So that connector is, uh, if we plug this connector in, the six pin one, that is, sends the voltage over to the displays. And all of this is in the schematics. You know, you don't have to remember any of this or anything. It's all written in the schematics. So our voltages there are fine. Now again, we're going to get rid of all that because we're, we're going to put LED displays in it. Okay, and then we're going to, now we're going to check this big connector here. And it's telling me that the 15 pin header. So uh, pin six, it says is nine volts, which I think it's 12 volts, but we'll see. Pin six is nine volts, it's saying. Uh, pin seven, eight, nine, and 10 are five volts. And then 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 are ground. So six is nine volts. I believe it'll be more like 12 because it's unregulated. Uh, and uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are 5 volts. So the same thing, get your ground from the board. We're going to go to pin 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Very carefully because you don't want to touch two pins. 13.29 volts. And then the one right next to it, 5 volts dead on the freaking money. There's no load on it though, but we're getting our 5 volts just like we, just like we need. Okay. So, what's that tell you? Power supply is good. Everything's working on it. All the voltages are fine. Uh, and so we can plug the stuff up and see if the board boots up if we were to that point or not to that point. But I guess we could try it and just see what happens. Uh, 
and try not to uh, scare the hell out of anybody whenever we plug it up it might lock coils and stuff on but hey we'll uh I'll attempt it let me turn it off and uh, we'll plug that stuff in and then we'll see but you know with all that acid damage I know it's not gonna work but we'll I'll turn it on and we'll just see if it locks any coils on or anything and if it does we'll turn it back off real quick okay so I've got everything plugged in uh, watch the power supply for fuses blowing um, look for smoke <laughs> we'll probably get some LEDs come on over here on the MPU that is going to tell us that the MPU is locked up because with that acid damage it probably can't even read the code and try to start but the main thing you want to look for is whenever you uh, turn on the game, sometimes you'll hear a coil come on. It'll make a noise, pop, something, something's locking on, right? If it does that, you want to turn the game right back off because you're about to blow a fuse or something like that. You can go through and actually unplug everything on the driver board too so that it can't do that. But uh, we're just going to wing it and see. Right? So I'll turn it on real quick. Might, might turn it right back off. Okay, so I did hear a coil, so I turned it right back off. So we're going to try that again. Nothing that time, but did you hear the uh, soundboard make the noise? It's ran by solenoids too, so. Now see the two, the two red lights on the MPU? I believe that's telling us that everything's locked up uh, and the game isn't doing anything. But, so I'll turn it back off and uh, just for now I'm going to unplug this five volts and the displays that will unplug all this stuff so that we don't have anything hooked up since nothing's working right I don't know if somebody's gonna come in tomorrow and turn the game on or something but if they do they'll get all of the uh, at least all of the general illumination working so uh, we've at least got it where We've got all of our lights up and running. None of that even runs through the power supply. And we've checked our power supply to make sure that uh, that uh, it's doing what it does. And then we, we tested our MPU. It's not working. It's locking on. So we already knew that, though, because of the, uh, the uh, alkaline damage. Basically, if you leave old batteries on the board, they rot the board away. So see those ROMs there with how bad the legs look? Basically, the, the, the game board can't talk to all of the chips that it needs to to run the code and make things happen. So, we're going to have to take all that out and rework the driver board and the, uh, the MPU. But, you know what? That will be on the next video because this one's getting long. But, we have got a nice solid base to start on. So, I've been talking for 30, 40 minutes now. And where are we? We're really, in one way, we're no farther along than we were, but in another way, we now know that the power's fine, everything's cleaned up, uh, we know what came with the game, we've rebuilt the power supply where we don't have to worry about that anymore, we've got a nice solid 5 volts that we're starting off of that's dead on 5 volts. Um, we know that our display voltages work even though we won't use them in the future. and. Uh, because of that, you know, we're, we're systematically working through the game, and now we're to the point where we can mess with the MPU and try to get that to work. So if you, if you open this up and you go, oh, look, there's acid damage on the MPU. That's why it won't work. Let's fix that. It, without rebuilding the power supply, that filter capacitor and all of that stuff, you know, do you know if it's a power problem? Maybe there's ripple AC voltage on the on the DC power and all of that. You need something solid to build it on. I won't. I shouldn't have to go back to the power supply and mess with it anymore because we took the time to go through it, get it doing its thing, and so uh, hopefully that's all taken care of. But that'll be it for tonight. Now tomorrow when I come in, I'll start in on that. The only other thing I wanted to mention, I mentioned it in passing earlier. On this game, we didn't do it yet. We will do it before we finish it up. But these two bridge rectifiers are a problem. The, the voltage coming in off of this transformer runs through these bridges. The, the problem is these bridges short out sometimes. You never know when it's going to happen. Just they do it. If I put a new one on there, the new one might short out. It's just that from time to time a bridge rectifier will short out. And when it does, there is a problem on these games where if the fuse and the bottom 
doesn't immediately blow, it starts cooking the wires and it burns up the wires on the transformer and it's a it's a big deal. I actually was filming a video and it happened while I was working on a game a couple years ago. If you go look through some of our old pinball repair videos on Williams games, you'll see that happen. Uh, and it'll cook the wires and burn them up. And so to fix that, you have to put a fuse on, on the lines going in there. We'll do that on another video, but um, make sure you take care of that if you are working in your power supply area. But that's it for now. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about it. You think this is a good starting point? What do you think? Is this going to be a fun one? I think it's going to work out and be a pretty cool little game. It certainly looks good, and we've got the power and everything already now. Um, we can start working on the MPU next time, get it rocking and rolling. So uh, join us next time. I've got some parts ones, by the way. I've got some other boards that I can work through. If we can't fix that one, maybe I've got another one that we can fix. But we'll get this sucker up and running, and we'll we'll look at some uh, test ROMs and things like that so we can um, get it, make sure everything's cool on it. We'll burn some new uh, code and everything, and uh, hopefully that'll get us up and playing. But leave your comments below. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure to. If you haven't watched our older videos, go check them out. We've got hundreds of videos on YouTube of us working on stuff like this. We've been doing it for a long time. We're not experts at it. But we stumble our way through. That's how we like to put it. So uh, join us next time. We'll stumble through another one for you. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Leave your comments below, and I'll try to answer as much of them as I can, as I feasibly have time to. And we will see you on the next video. This is Williams Phoenix Pinball Machine.